cataractcoach.com. Technique of using piggyback IOLs, including how do you figure out the correct power? So here's a patient where we originally want to do an IOL exchange, but this patient has this high power torque lens in the bag and we're unable to dissect it out of the bag. We really had a hard time dissecting it and we have to have a torque lens there for a high degree of corneal astigmatism. So we've just enlarged the incision a little bit here, putting in more viscoelastic and notice we're putting it under the iris, just a little small aliquots all around to create a little more gap there in that sulcus. So we're gonna leave the existing lens in the capture bag. It's a toric lens, correcting a good degree of corneal astigmatism, but this patient still ended up hyperopic in the post-op period. And so this patient now needs additional eye well power in order to achieve that emetropic outcome here. So putting the lens in, this is a three-piece lens, not going to the sulcus. Remember, the sulcus lens has to be a three-piece here in the U.S. So getting that leading haptic, like the 7L rule, coming out like the number seven, that looks good. And getting that under the iris in the sulcus. And then here's the optic and let it unfold. Now, what are your choices? You can put in a three-piece acrylic lens like this. You can also do a three-piece silicone lens, which may even be easier to do. Those are both very good options here. Be cautious, though. Sometimes these lenses can have thick edges, and you don't want to get any iris shaping there. Now, these three-piece lenses are posteriorly vaulted. They're not planar. So there is an angulation between the haptic and the optic, and that allows it to sit a little bit deeper in the eye so you won't get that iris scraping. So there it goes. It goes in the sulcus very nicely, very easily. That's not, not the difficult part. The difficult part is figuring out, well, is this the correct solution for your patient? So if it's a small myopic refractive error, let's say the patient ends up minus one or two, that's relatively easy to fix with just surface ablation. Just do PRK with an eczema laser, maybe LASIK. But if the patient can't tolerate that in the cornea, or if the patient has a hyperopic surprise, really not ideal doing plus two or plus three hyperopic LASIK. You're better off either doing lens exchange or, like in this case, do a piggyback lens. So in this case, the piggyback lens, how are we determining the power? We'll base it on the patient's refraction. And generally speaking, it's about one and a half times the refraction. So if the patient's a plus two hyperope and you want to treat that plus two hyperopia, your lens power is going to be about plus three, about one and a half times. So similarly, if the patient's a plus three hyperope and you want to do piggyback lens, then you should put in about a four and a half diopter. Now take into account other things too, such as the patient's do they want to end up slightly minus or they would rather end up slightly plus? All those things obviously play a role in determining this. And once that lens is there in the sulcus, as you can see, it's going to stay in good position. Now, this patient's pupil doesn't dilate all that much, so that's good. It's really holding the optic. We're going to hydrate the incision here. You can put in a pupil constrictor, um, like a, a myostat or myocol. Any of the things are fine to induce some meiosis. And we can put that in now. That'll help bring down the pupil. And then that's, of course, if you sometimes may not last long enough. If you're doing the myo call, be sure to put something else for the post-op period. Myo call may wear off after a few hours. The myostat tends to hang around for a couple days. And so the incisions are nicely sealed up here. Again, we can put in the pupil constricting agents here and bring that iris down. So piggyback lenses are a very valuable technique. I also think it's the right way of doing an ultra-high hyper, like a nanophthalmic guy that we showed yesterday. If your patient calculates out, let's say, for a 47 diopter lens, put in the max power we have here at the time of cataract surgery, which is 40 diopters, single piece acrylic lens. We have that available in the USA. Let the patient heal up for a couple of months, see how they end up doing, and if you need to, then you can determine the post op period. Is there enough room in the sulcus for another lens, a piggyback? And if so, you can calculate it with a lot more accuracy because you're going to do it based on the refraction. Patient here had a very nice outcome, as you can tell. We put a little triamcinolone to help quell any inflammation, putting some antibiotic in the eye, seal up all those incisions, just check everything, and make sure we're good to go. So piggyback lenses, we don't use them all that often, but there are times when it works great. And yes, there's plenty of room. Remember, you're taking out a four plus millimeter thick human lens and replacing it with IOLs, and this is in two lenses, each is only about a millimeter thin. So plenty of room, beautiful outcome. Thanks for watching.